Dr. Balaga here. This podcast is third in a series on the first modern pandemic, a blog post or a memo written by Mr. Bill Gates at his uh, website gatesnotes.com. This third podcast will discuss innovation to beat the enemy. He writes, during World War II, an amazing amount of innovation including radar, reliable torpedoes and code breaking help the end the war faster. This will be the same with pan- the pandemic. He breaks the innovation into five categories, treatments, vaccines, testing, contact tracing and policies for opening up. Without some advances in each of these areas, he says we cannot return to business as usual or stop the virus. He goes through each area in some detail. First area or first category, treatments. He writes, every week you'll be reading about new treatment ideas that are being tried out, but most of them will fail. However, he's still optimistic that some of these therapies will meaningfully reduce the disease burden. Some will be easier to deliver in rich countries than developing countries, and some will take time to scale. A number of these could be available by the summer or fall. If in the spring of 2021, people are going to public events like a game or a concert in a stadium, it will be because we have a miraculous treatment that made people confident about going out again. It's hard to know precisely what the threshold is, but he suspects it is something like 95%. That is, we need a treatment that is 95% effective in order for people to feel safe in big public gatherings. Although it's possible that a combination of treatments will have over 95% effectiveness, it is not likely, so we can't count on it. If our best treatments reduce the deaths by less than 95%, then we will still need a vaccine before we can go back to normal. One potential treatment that doesn't fit the normal definition of a drug involves collecting blood from plasma from patients who have recovered from COVID, making sure it's free of the coronavirus and other infections, and giving the plasma to people who are sick. The leading companies in this area are working together to put together a standard protocol to see if this works. They will have to measure each patient to see how strong their antibodies are. A variant of this approach is to take the plasma and concentrate it into a compound called hyperimmune globulin, which is much easier and faster to give a patient than unconcentrated plasma. The Gates Foundation is supporting a consortium of most of the leading companies that work in this area to accelerate the evaluation And if the procedure works, be ready to scale it up. These companies have developed a plasma bot to help recovered COVID patients donate plasma for this effort. Another type of potential treatment involves identifying the antibodies produced by the human immune system that are most effective against novel coronavirus. Once these antibodies have been found, They can be manufactured and used as a treatment or as a way to prevent the disease, in which case it is known as passive immunization. This antibody approach also has a good chance of working, although it's unclear how many doses can be made. It depends on how much antibody material is needed per dose. In 2021, the manufacturers may be able to make as few as 100,000 treatments or many millions. The lead times for manufacturing about seven months in the best case. His foundation's grantees are working to compare the different antibodies and make sure the best ones get access 
to the limited manufacturing capacity. There's a class of drugs called antivirals, which keeps the virus from functioning or reproducing. The drug industry has created amazing antivirals to help with HIV. Although it took decades to build up a large library of very effective triple drug therapies. For the novel coronavirus, the leading drug candidate is the, in this category is Remdesivir from Gilead, which is in trials now. It was created for Ebola. If it proves to have benefits, then the manufacturing will have to be scaled up dramatically. The Gates Foundation recently asked drug companies to provide access to the pipeline of dev developed ant antiviral drugs. So researchers funded by the Therapeutics Accelerator can run a screen to see which should go into human trials first. The drug companies all responded very quickly. So there's a long list of antivirals being screened. Another class of drugs by changing how the human body reacts to the virus. For example, hydroxychloroquine is in this category. The Bill Gates and Melinda Gates Foundation is funding a trial that will give an indication of whether it works on COVID by the end of May. It appears the benefits will be modest at best. Another type of drug that changes the way a human reacts to a virus is called immune system modulator. These drugs will be most helpful for late stage serious disease. All of the companies that work in this area are doing everything they can help with these trials. What's not in this memo is the WHO led solidarity trials and the French discovery trials, which is large uh, trials evaluating different medications in uh, coronavirus. The next category he, he discusses is vaccines. Vaccines have saved more lives than any other tool in history. He says, smallpox, which used to kill millions of people every year, was eradicated with a vaccine. New vaccines have played a key role in reducing childhood deaths from 10 million per year in 2000 to fewer than 5 million per year today. Short of miracle therapy, which we can't count on, the only way to return the world to where it was before COVID showed up is a highly effective vaccine that prevents the disease. Unfortunately, the typical development time for a vaccine against new disease is over five years. This is broken down into A, making the candidate vaccine, B, testing in animals, C, safety testing in small numbers of people. This is known as phase one. D, safety and efficacy testing in medium numbers, phase two. E, safety and efficacy testing in large numbers, phase three. And F, final regulatory approval and building manufacturing while registering the vaccine in every country. Then I'm, I must add, there is another phase, which, which is post-market surveillance. He goes on to say, researchers can save time by compressing the clinical safety efficacy phases while conducting animal tests and building manufacturing capacity in parallel. Even so, no one knows in advance which vaccine approach will work. So a number of them need to be funded so they can advance at full speed. Many of the vaccine approaches will fail because they won't generate a strong enough immune response to provide protection. Scientists will get a sense of this within three months of testing in humans by looking at the antibody generation. Of particular interest is whether the vaccine will protect older people whose immune systems don't respond as well to vaccines. The issue of safety is obviously very important. Regulators are very stringent about safety to avoid side effects and also to protect the reputation of vaccines broadly since if one has significant problems, people will become 
more hesitant to take any vaccines. Regulators worldwide will have to work together to decide how large the safety database needs to be to approve a COVID vaccine. One step that was taken after the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and others called for investments in pandemic preparedness in 2015 was the creation of the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI. Although the resources were quite modest, they have helped advance new approaches to making vaccine that could be used for this pandemic. CEPI added resources to work on an approach called RNA vaccines, which his foundation has been supporting for some time. Three companies are pursuing this approach. The first vaccine to start human trials is the RNA vaccine for Moderna, which started a phase one clinical safety evaluation in March. What I heard on TV yesterday was the Oxford group also has a vaccine, which is going into phase one. And you're on with this his memo. An RNA vaccine is significantly different from a conventional vaccine. A flu shot, for example, contains bits of flu virus that your body's immune system learns to attack. This is what gives you immunity. When an RNA vaccine, rather than injecting fragments of the virus, you give the body the genetic code needed to produce lots of copies of these fragments. When the immune system sees the virus, fragments, it learns how to attack them. An RNA vaccine essentially turns your body into its own vaccine manufacturing unit. There are also at least five leading efforts that look promising, that use other approaches to teach the immune system to recognize and attack a viral infection. CEPI, that is the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation, and the Gates Foundation, will be tracking efforts from all over the world to make sure that the most promising ones get resources. Once a vaccine is ready, the, the foundation partner, GAVI, Gavi, will make sure it's available even in low-income countries. A big challenge for vaccine trials is that the time required for trials depends on finding trial locations where the rate of infection is fairly high. While setting up the trial site and getting regulatory approval, the infection rate in that location could go down. And trials have to involve a surprisingly large number of people. For example, suppose the expected rate of infection is 1% per year, and you want to run a trial where you would expect 50 people to be infected without the vaccine. To get a result in six months, the trial would need 10,000 people enrolled in it. The goal is to pick the one or two best vaccine constructs and vaccinate the entire world. That's 7 billion doses if it is a single dose vaccine and 14 billion if it's a two dose va vaccine. The world will be in a rush to get them. So the scale of manufacturing will be unprecedented and will probably have to involve multiple companies. He's often asked when a large-scale vaccination will start, like America's top public health officials, he says that it is likely to be 18 months, even though it could be as short as 9 months or closer to 2 years. A key piece will be the length of the phase 3 trial, which is where the full safety and efficacy are determined. When the vaccine is first being manufactured, there'll be a question of who should be vaccinated first. Ideally, there would be a global agreement about who should get the vaccine first. But given how many competing interests are, this is unlikely to happen. The government that provide the funding, the countries where the trials are run, and the places where the pandemic is worst of all will make a case they should get top priority. And the other challenge is whether people will accept the vaccination. Today I had a patient in clinic 
who declined the flu vaccine because she believed that her son got transverse myelitis because of the vaccine. So a lot of challenges with vaccine. The next podcast will discuss testing and contract tracing from Mr. Bill Gates' memo titled The First Modern Pandemic available available at gatesnotes.com. This is a verbatim reading of this very important memo.